So I've never used Rust before and I've never written a single line of code in Rust. And today I'm gonna pop open a new window of VS Code and just try to write something in Rust. <laughs> What could go wrong? Now I'm gonna use a tutor that's available for free, at least for now, to kind of help me learn the ropes. And then I'm gonna try to write a calculator and a merge sorting algorithm with the skills that I learned. The one rule is I cannot use official documentation to figure out what to do, but I can Google stuff and I can use GitHub Copilot to help me out. I gotta be ready, right? So as a software developer, it's my duty to keep up to date with things. That's how I've been surviving for the past, oh, 12 years, learning new technologies, keeping up to date, so Rust is looking pretty good as a thing to learn. So I'm gonna create a new directory called Rust because I'm so creative today. Let's create a subdirectory called start and let's pop this open in VS Code. All right, what file extension does Rust use anyway? Should I guess that? Uh, Start.ru? No, that's Ruby. Rust? No. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to Google this one. Rust file extension. RS. Okay, VS Code knows what it is. How do we do comments? Is it slash slash? Looks like that might be it. Function to loop over array and print each element. Sounds good to me. There it is. Oh no, what is this? What is this syntax? Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out how to pass parameters into functions. Constant array of integers, that's good. Thank you, uh, Copilot. So it looks like array, that's probably the name of the variable. Let's call it array one. I32, that's probably the type. Semicolon and then five because we have five integers. What if this was six? I don't know, let's, let's keep it at five. But I also now need to know how to run this file how to execute it. Copilot can help me with that. Let's go to run and debug, run and debug. You don't have an extension for debugging Rust. Should we find it? Yes. This one has 1.5 million downloads. Should I try it? This one has the most installs. Doesn't mean it's always the best, but why the heck not? Let's try it. Seems like it's pretty well documented and uh, it's installed. Let's go over here to the debug tab, run and debug. LLDB. It created a launch.json file for me automatically. Let's try debugging it again. Unable to find executable. Because Rust is a compiled language, I need to build it first. Now I've done this before for tests, but that was only for tests and I don't remember how to do that. How to build a Rust file. You know what, how do I start a Rust project? Wait, do I have Rust installed? Let's see. I'm gonna go to the terminal and I'm gonna do Rust command not found. I probably need to just install Rust. Here's a command. Hopefully this is something official. Let's run it. Good, proceed with the installation. So I started writing a Rust program without even having Rust installed. That's what doing node development does to you. Rust is installed, great. Now can I just say Rust? How do I run this thing? Is it Rust C? Ah, Rust C. Okay, Rust C start. Uh, main function not found. I really don't know anything about Rust. I guess we need a main function, don't we? Start the Rust program. Ah, oh, look at that. So it took my array and it called the print array function, passing in my array. Is this gonna work? It compiled it. It created a little thing called start, which is a binary. Can we just run it? How do I run it? I don't know. Let's try doing the debugging again. No, unable to find executable. It's still not liking it. How about, let me look at that launch configuration again. Oh, it says your program. I need to change this to start, of course. Let's give that a shot. Developer tools access needs to take control of another process. This looks not super safe. Why the hell not? Okay, what just happened? Did I just give somebody access to my computer? I deserve it, if that's what happened. <gasps> it worked! Holy shit, this thing just printed out my my array right there. Why am I so excited about printing an array? I don't know. Like, I haven't been this excited in many years. Let me add one more number to the array and see how we can change that, or 10 numbers, sure. Now, is this array gonna work? Because we've got five, we're allocating five spaces, but we're putting in 10 numbers and there's no complaints from the editor. So what's the workflow? Can I just debug this file without building it first or is that not gonna work? Looks like that's not gonna work. But what if I put a breakpoint here? Is it gonna let me do that? Nope. So the debugger is not actually debugging shit. It's not actually debugging. It's not connecting. It's just running it, which is fine, but kind of wanted to. So I think what it's doing is just running this. 
is just executing the binary. Nothing else is happening. Not what I want. So if I do rust C and then give it the start file, it's now it's complaining because there's a fixed size of the array, five elements, and now there's 10 elements in there. Now, do I need to provide the size of the array? Let's take out that semicolon too. Yeah, it needs to know the size. That's unfortunate. Can we just make it really big or what? What if I just take that out altogether? Do I need to specify the type and the size? Is there no such thing as a dynamic array? Come on. All right, forget that connect thing. I'm just gonna run start like that and it does print out the 10 elements, but that's not fun. I want a dynamic array. Why is there a bang at the end of print line? I don't know. Let's learn some if statements now. I wanna see if the number is, uh, I don't know, odd. If the integer is even printed, there's the if statement. Can I do parentheses in if statements? Yeah, I guess so. Ah, uh, warn, unused parens. What do you mean unused? I'm using them. So maybe there's some kind of Rust configuration that I can use to get rid of this warning, this unused parens warning. Well, I kinda liked strictness. Strictness is good in a language. I, I like having strictness, so there's my even numbers. Now, I, want, I still wanna be able to debug Rust, build your project with cargo build. What is this cargo thing? When you install Rust, cargo, is that installed? Cargo, yeah, okay. Let's do cargo build. Okay, so it needs a cargo toml file. Why don't I have a cargo toml file? Is there a good way to initiate project, like a new project? All I wanna do, create a new project. Oh, I don't wanna click on learn because I'm supposed to learn from this thing, but this is gonna teach me the language and how to do loops and if statements and variables, but who's gonna teach me how to set up a project and the environment? How do I do that? And sometimes that is not as straightforward as learning a new language because the environment part is kind of the hard part when you're starting out with a new technology. If you already know one language, other languages are just syntactical differences, really. Well, most of the time, not always. I'm looking at you, small talk. All right, you know what? I'm gonna have to search Google. I can't use the documentation and I can't use the learn tab. How to start a new Rust project, cargo, new. So cargo is like the thing to use, I guess, right? Let me go back to the command line. I'm gonna back out of here. I'm gonna create a new directory called middle. This is the middle of my learning, okay? I already know all the first half. Okay, what? Oh, okay, here we go. So there's a cargo toml file that is generating. Good. And then there's a separate source folder. Let's pop that open in VS Code, shall we? Look at this toml file. What do we got here? We got a package name, we got a version, edition. Good. And there is our main. So it's called main. That's the convention, not start. By the way, don't look at this video as like a tutorial on Rust. It's probably a bad idea to do that. <laughs> if you want a tutorial on Rust, look at real tutorials. We've got a main, we've got a print hello world. Can we use, no, no launch configuration has been provided. I can't use the Visual Studio Code debugger. Tomo has been detected in this workspace. Would you like to generate launch configurations for its targets? Let's try it, why not? Whoa, okay, so it knows something about that, apparently. It's this this uh, launch JSON file looks a lot different. Let's see, debug executable hello world. Why not? Let's put a breakpoint right there and start. Is that gonna work? Yes, that works. Okay, this is the way to go right here. You gotta use cargo. You can't just start the Rust. Apparently you can't just start with a Rust file. You need to use cargo to do that and you need the toml file. Cool, I can now debug, which is probably one of the most important things we need to be able to do as developers. Now I have all this code, which I can just steal from my other project and put it in here. Now, let me put a breakpoint right there in that for loop. Well, how about right there? And try this again. And there we go, look at that. I can examine my variables. I can look at my array. This is kind of weird. So these are the array slots and the values. And I think it's because we're passing by reference. Is that what that means? The very, um, very C, C++ like syntax. This is very cool. Now I can debug. Okay, let's stop that. Let's do something meaningful. How about a calculator program? Okay, so I need to be able to accept user input. Accept user input as integer. Function get input, it returns an i32, which I know now is an integer, a <laughs> 32-bit integer. Input string new, this syntax is gonna bug me. So there's const and there's lets, kinda like um, JavaScript. IO, oh boy, we're using um, the IO namespace here. STDN, read line, oh man. And it's also checking for an integer right there. Why is there no semicolon at the end of this line? I don't know. Are semicolons optional in this language? 
Let's see. I'm going to debug this. What's going on? Two errors. Okay. Use of undeclared crate or module IO. I was afraid that was going to happen. I don't know how to import. Import the IO module. Use STD colon colon IO. Hopefully that works. Let's try this again. That worked. Well, it didn't give me an error at least. Now I just need to call the function called uh, get input. Yeah. And I probably should save its output to something like, um, well, let's do let or let's do const in one. Let's put a colon right there or a breakpoint right there. Provide a type for the constant. Right. Of course, I32. What now? Calls and constants are limited to constant functions. I'm going to switch that to let. Let's see if that works. What's going on? Something happening right now? Is it waiting for me? I probably should write out enter your number here. Let's do uh, hello. Oh, what just happened? That just threw a thing. Rust panic. This is making me panic. I'm not super friendly, that one. Can I do an output here? Um, let's see. Prompt user to enter an integer. Print, enter an integer. There we go. And let's do that again. Enter an integer. Five. And in one is five. Nice. Let's just follow the happy path. Error handling, I'll do that some other time just like testing. So we're going to have two integers and then we're going to have an operation except user input as a string. Cool. Now it's it's actually wow, look at this. Wow. This is cool. It's actually using my previous function, including what I added to it. And it's duplicating it. By the way, this is bad code, solid, dry, don't repeat yourself. So this should be just accepting user input once and for whatever type I need, converting it later. But I'm going to use this for now. So let op and this is going to be a string. And I think it needs to be like this. Get input string. OK, so apparently if it's the last line of a function, it doesn't need a semicolon. What if I add another line after that? That's really just not fun, not good. I'm going to add a semicolon because that's how we need to do it properly, okay? So we've got two inputs, an operation. Now I'm not going to bother checking the operation. I'm just going to assume that everything is good. And instead of printing the array here, I'm going to look at this. I think that Copilot has figured out what I'm trying to do without me even saying that I'm doing a calculator. Look at this. It says if operator is plus, add the two numbers. Now I might not want to do it that way, but it's figuring out what I'm trying to do. Let me just let it do its thing and see where it goes. <gasps> I mean, it, it did it for me. It's done. The calculator is done. Not the best architecture, but it figured out what I'm trying to do just based on me getting two integers and a string. It figured out that I want to do an operation. That is extremely cool. I'm going to run that and see if it works. OK, it's complaining about something. What? It says remove the semicolon. You want me to remove the semicolon? Are you serious? <laughs> OK, that is just weird. OK, the last line cannot have a semicolon. All right, whatever. Enter an integer six. Enter an integer. Let's go nine. Enter a string multiplication. I thought this was going to be harder. This is pretty cool. I got to say, but all these if else, if else statements, not the best. Let's refactor this. I want a function that accept uh, two integers and perform an arithmetic operation. But what's the operation? Accept two integers and operator and perform the arithmetic operation. Let's put a comma right there. This is a dream come true. This this whole thing. Crazy, crazy stuff right here. We live in crazy times. Look at this. It says match operator. That's like a switch statement. Wow. And it's doing the thing. I mean, that's amazing. Let's see if this kind of comments work. Yes, they do. Multi line comments work here. So let's call that function arithmetic operation. Oh, I didn't even need to start typing anything. It already knows what I'm trying to do. It knows, folks, this is insane. I don't even know what to say about this. Print result. That's what I was about to say. It just knows. OK, let's run this thing. Two, six, multiplication, 12. Now I could throw it for a loop and start putting in unexpected values and things like that. But all that has to do with error checking. So I think I've got kind of what I wanted. I have the basics of using consts, using lets, having a switch statement. If statements, I learn about the loop. I mean, there's a ton of other things. There's framework related things like importing modules and packages that I have no idea what anything is and what packages they're in. So the IO, for example, is 
was one of those. But based on this, I kind of get the idea of how Rust works and it's not terrible. Now you can also go in and try to figure out what types that there are in the language like um, accept a floating, accept a decimal number and return nearest integer. Okay, fine. There we go. So F64, you know, that's the decimal representation. That's the type for the decimal. So you can also do operations like this, call things like floor on them. I wonder if VS Code has IntelliSense for things like this. So let me try something like that just as a tool to help things out. Let me see if VS Code will help me. No, that's not the help I'm needing here because this is the help from Copilot. But I want, yeah, it doesn't look like I get IntelliSense. Oh, well. One other interesting getting started project is doing a sort. So let's say I back this file up, create a new main.rs file and um, sort uh, an array. Do I want an array? I want a list because arrays are weird. Mutt numbers, vector. Why is that a comment? Interesting. Okay, so VEC function to sort and a, a list of integers. Okay, so let's try that. Why is that being commented out? I don't know. Interesting. What? List.sort has a built-in function. Interesting. Okay, so mutt probably means mutable list of numbers here. And vec probably means an array that's dynamic, I'm guessing. Let's delete this. Okay, so we've got a main function, let mutable list vec five numbers in there. We're gonna print the list, we're gonna sort the list, and then we're gonna print the list. This thing is insane. Oh, okay, let's try that. But these numbers are not even, all right, let's do this. Eight, one, two, one, 100 or 200. Okay, now let's sort it. Cool, but what about implementing my own sort? Like, I, I don't know what sort uses under the hood. What about doing a merge sort? Function to, um, function to perform a merge sort, okay, of a list of integers. Where is it? There it is. Took a while to pop that up, but there it is. Now this, okay, there we go. It is a recursive function. Very cool. So it sorts the two halves and then merges the two sorted halves. This is uh, this is a quite a ridiculous implementation. They got like three while loops in there. Why? Can't you just append two halves together? Merge the two sorted halves takes up three while loops. Are you serious? Oh, copy the remaining elements. That just sounds ridiculous. Why can't you just concatenate two arrays? Well, let's give it a shot. Instead of sort list, I'm going to call merge sort and pass in that list and let's go it worked my job here is done i'm a rust master i'm gonna i'm gonna go now